Hello, I'm Dr. James Thomas. I'm going to share with you a story about vocal cord stripping. Imagine someone peeling the skin off of your vocal cords. It's still done. And I had the unfortunate experience of having a patient that I'd seen a number of years ago come back to me recently after they'd had their vocal cords stripped. I think it's very instructive. And if you're a surgeon that strips, I hope you're listening closely, although I suspect you're not in my audience. This is a very pleasant lady who doesn't speak any English, and I spoke to her through a translator, so we're not going to play her words, but I do want you to hear that she's complaining about she can't make speech or voice. Her voice cuts out, she says, when she goes to talk. And I'm going to ask her to say, as long and as smooth as she can, on one breath. Now listen to what she does. <laughs> now, interestingly, she can laugh just fine. And this is very characteristic of a particular voice disorder called spasmodic dysphonia. That is, <laughs> comes out fine, but anytime you try to keep the vocal cords together, they cut out. So let's go look at her laryngoscopy so we can visually see what spasmodic dysphonia can look like. And this is not going to be an exhaustive coverage of spasmodic dysphonia. I'll save that for another tape. And what I'd like you to see is that she's having this incredible squeeze that chokes off her voice. She really can't get the sound out. But let's go back and look here. And one thing we notice is her vocal cords are pearly white. There's no bumps, nodules, polyps, cancers. The vocal cords themselves are fine. If we look at her laryngoscopy with the strobe light on, we'll even see in a very brief period that they can vibrate. We do have a mucosal wave. Try a different sound. When she gets them going, they're supple and we see the wave. So intrinsically, the vocal cords aren't the problem. The problem is a neurologic one. The vocal cords are tightening up too much. I recommended that we Treat her with what's one of the generally accepted treatments, injections of botulinum toxin into the vocal cords. Now, if the diagnosis is correct, then the appropriate treatment should yield some favorable results. We'll listen to her voice a few weeks after we've injected the botulinum toxin. <laughs> We haven't turned her into an opera singer, but she's clearly able to go longer on one breath with not as much effort. And if we look at her laryngoscopy, we'll find the same thing. There's much more stability to the larynx, and she can go longer on a breath. So that's the benefit of the treatment. Now, she wasn't utterly happy with this. We did a number of of uh, treatments and she would have a good voice for a while and one of the disadvantages is that you need retreatment in this particular disorder and you get another shot and she did not like the shots at all. Not unreasonably she decided to go for a second opinion which I wholeheartedly encourage. Uh, anybody who comes to see me I would if they doubt what I'm saying at all they should see someone else and compare the opinions. Now she went to see someone who said you have Ranke's edema or smoker's polyps. And I find that very interesting because she's never smoked in her life. Now, how do you make a diagnosis of smoker's polyps in someone who never smokes? Well, problem number one. Problem number two, the physician says, we need to strip your vocal cords and you'll be better. Hmm. Let's listen to see what stripping does. <laughs> Hmm, doesn't sound too good. Why doesn't it sound good? Well, look at the vocal cords. Now, they used to be white, and now they're nothing but scar tissue. How well does scar vibrate? Let's find out. Hmm, let's watch the strobe. So now, in addition to spasms, she can't make the vocal cords vibrate at all. Hmm, we've got a problem. Well, where did this idea of stripping come from? Now, I think it came fundamentally 
from some findings back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s that when you stripped a vocal cord, if there was a bump there and you got the bump off, the voice got better. And it missed a key part of that uh, problem, and that is you were trading one thing for another. And let me show you a patient who had a cancer who I took the cancer off, and the patient was left with a vocal cord that was non-vibratory. Essentially, it was completely scarred, and he has a reasonable voice. If we look here, we can see that his left vocal cord is stiff as a board, hmm. and the right one vibrates, and as long as the right one has something to close against, he can make a fairly good sound. Take a look at another pitch. Again, only the right side vibrating, but it sounds pretty clear. There may have been a role when physicians didn't know better for stripping a vocal cord, and in general, people would only strip one side because they had learned if you strip both sides, you end up sounding like our patient here, which is unfortunate. There was a time and a place for everything, perhaps. There, there was a role for crucifixion, perhaps, 2,000 years ago, if you wanted to piss off half the world. And there's probably still a place for vocal cord stripping if you want to piss off your malpractice attorney. But I think we should leave stripping behind. And you, as a patient, you can be polite about it. But if someone suggests stripping your cords, I think it's time for you to find a different surgeon. And if you happen to be the surgeon that still strips, think about what your outcomes are. and perhaps there's a time to send the patient on to someone younger who's learned to use, uh, or yourself learned to use, some of the delicate scissors and forceps and lasers so that you can take care of problems on the vocal cord. Still, if the diagnosis is wrong, you won't get better. And in our case, we had a patient with spasmodic dysphonia, and the treatment needs to be appropriate for the disorder. If you'd like to know more about your voice, or if your doctor has suggested stripping your vocal cords, perhaps have a look at voicedoctor.net. I'm Dr. James Thomas.